of what we have or what we want to be discussing is pre-existence and preeminence of Yahshua. Pre-existence and preeminence of Yahshua. Now, two important questions emerge from this particular title. One is, I will say or ask a question, have have you seen Yahweh? Ha, or has anybody seen Yahweh? I lived. Now, this question is coming on the heels of the fact that some people have said that the Bible is contradictory in its nature. And why they posit Bible as a book that is contradicting itself is that there are two different schools. The school that believe that the Messiah hasn't come. And the, the other school that believe that Yahshua has come. But that the issue is that the Bible is contradicting itself particularly the first group. The first school of thought says there is so much contradiction in the Bible that they say Yahshua has come. Now, why would we have these issues of some say they have seen Yahweh and some say they haven't seen Yahweh? So as a result, those people said, well, the Bible as it is, is not right. The Old Testament should be right. The New Testament is not right. So by rejecting the Old Testament, they are rejecting the coming of the Messiah, which in the New Testament, we read about his appearing and the work he did. We've written about him. The second group of the school of thought that says, well, they haven't seen him, are saying, well, Old Testament, they will rely upon it and uh, make and await the Messiah to come. So they are expecting Messiah. Those who are saying Messiah had already come, gone, and will be coming back again, are saying, yes, nobody has seen the Father, but so, somehow they have seen the Messiah. Now somebody will say, oh, Messiah was seen, that is to the school of thought that believed that yeah, Messiah had come at a point. They will say, yes, that Messiah came, but it was about 2,000 years ago, period. Now there is this other extreme believers that said that yes there is old testament there is new testament yeshua indeed came the new testament era people saw him as well as the old testament era they saw him as well is but is bible contradicting itself because the bible that said nobody has seen away is also saying that I have seen Yahweh face to face. All right, we are going to look at what the Bible presents. So we are going to answer the query. 
Has anyone seen Yahweh and lived? And we're also going to answer the query that emanates from the thinking and the gaze that is coming from this end of sin and not sin. And that question is, Yahshua came in the new covenant times. How will his sacrificial atonement affect those who died before he came? Yahshua came in the New Testament times, New Covenant times, 2,000 years ago, through till today. So it's believed he came. Now the question is, ostensibly those asking this question, maybe those who are saying they are Old Testament believers only. Now the question is, that is posed is, how will his sacrificial atonement affect those who died before he came. So we're going to see how we, the, the scripture, you know, position the, the scripture itself, position what is called the covenant book. By covenant book, we mean the Old Testament and the New Testament. So we see how it is captured, what we must believe, what we must teach, what we must even teach our children so that this error will vanish. I have seen him. I have not seen him. He is there. He is not there. Let's listen to the scriptures. Now, one, let's begin with, I have seen Yahweh face to face. Or let's just oppose the two together. No one has seen Yahweh. I have seen Yahweh face to face. The Bible says no one has seen Yahweh in the same Bible we hear. We hear also, I have seen Yahweh face to face. What do we believe the Bible is trying to point out? <laughs> what is the Bible trying to showcase? This appears to be like some of the contradictions of the Bible, does it? How, however, for the truth to be unveiled in this jigsaw, because the Bible is looked at as jigsaw, as a puzzle. Now we must examine the, the word of Yahweh and in its entirety as a, a puzzle. We have to you know, fix this puzzle together to find the right place of what this query posits. Firstly, Whose words are we dealing with here? When we hear, no one has seen Yahweh. Now, no one was, no one has seen Yahweh was heard from the writing of Moses, Exodus 33, verse 30. John the beloved in first in John chapter 1, verse 18, we heard. No one has seen Yahweh. In Matthew 11, 27 to 28, etc., etc., we heard the sentence. Similarly, I have seen Yahweh face to face was revealed in the writing of the same Moses, Exodus 24, verse 10, Exodus 20, 23, etc. Even Joshua 5, 13, 15, 8, 56 to 59 showcased that I have seen Yahweh face to face, or someone has seen Yahweh face to face. How come Moshe and John are involved in the contradiction of the two statements above? How come? It's possible Moshe, that is Moses, did not know about the pre-existence and preeminence of Yahshua as one seated by the side of the Father, Proverb 8, 22 to 30, as he was empowered by the Father to create all things. Proverbs reveals the preeminence of Yahshua, Messiah himself. Now, in Proverbs chapter 8, 
22 to 30, even up to 36. The statement was, you know, read this way. Yahweh possessed me. Now, this is Yahshua speaking. He said, Yahweh possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. So, Proverbs is one of the oldest testament book, oldest Old Testament book. So, if we read in the Old Testament that Yahweh possessed Yahshua from the beginning of his way, before the works of old, what is the works of old? Before creation. Then if he is able to establish this, and he assert, I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the fountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. In fact, uh, David in Psalm chapter 90, verses 1 and 2, also mentioned similar or made similar statement. Now, you can read that on and on up to verse 36, Proverbs chapter 8 up to 36. Is Proverb telling us here? Proverb is telling us that Yahshua existed from beginning before creation. He had been there with the Father. Get that in your heart, in your mind, that Yahshua had been in existence. So that if you, if you don't catch this, you will not understand, I have seen and I have not seen. And you will not know when they are talking about who they see. So we are going to, the, the, the Bible also is going to reveal to us who was seen at the time he was seen. Now, Apostle Paul, Shaul, agrees with the above exposition and wrote of Yahshua, Messiah, regarding his creative preeminence and pre-existence revelation. Colossians chapter 1, 16 to 20, we read, for by him, that is Yahshua, we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or all things, we are created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body. Get that? He is the head of the body, the ministry, the assembly, the congregation he put together. He is the head who is the beginning, the firstborn of, from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his stake, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven. So here we receive from Shaul in Colossians chapter 1, 16 to 20, that Yahshua has been there, has been existing. We call it preeminence or preexistence and the preeminence, showcasing how he have lived even in glory, because he said, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Additionally, Yahshua says to the Jewish leaders, we have seen how many witnesses, we have seen what is written in Proverbs, ostensibly Solomon or David, the father, was affirming that. We've seen what David himself said in 
Psalm chapter 90, we've seen what Yash, uh, Shaul wrote also in Colossians. Now, what about Yahshua? Did he attest anything like that about his pre-existence and his preeminence? Additionally, Yahshua says to the Jewish leaders, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. What day is he talking about? What day is he referring to? He is saying that Abraham, before Abraham even existed, that he was there. What is he saying? He's talking about his pre-existence. He's talking about his living in the earth, coming into the earth, even before anybody. That means he was there when the earth was created. And we are going to hear that he is, he is part and parcel. In fact, Colossians, Shaul said that he created the earth. He created the all that we are in the earth, including human beings. And no wonder Yahshua here is talking about Abraham. But before Abraham, he was. And this he said in John chapter 8, 56 and 58. All these and many others are proofs that Yahweh empowered Yahshua to create all things to his glory. The scripture sometimes described Yahshua as the seed, the word of Yahweh, angel, man, servant, messenger, prophet, etc., expected to come for the judgment and salvation of Israel and the whole world. So this is the picture that we get or receive from the Bible we read about the pre-existence and preeminence of Yahshua, who had come in different titles. He came in his name as Yahshua, and we are told in Genesis that it's going to be the seed that is going to give deliverance or salvation to man. We also read that he is the word of Yahweh. We also read that he will be coming as angel. And he was called man, even Joshua, in Joshua chapter 5. Also, we saw that Yahweh also referred to him as servant and sometimes messenger. And even Yahweh called him prophet. When he was speaking to Moses, he said he's going to give Israel prophet. Yahshua, having been empowered to create all things, could be the one Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moshe, Joshua, interacted and worked with. As the promised seed, he was expected to come into the world at some time to establish and mediate on the covenant which Yahweh entered with mankind from the beginning of creation and to which humanity jettisoned and followed their own ways. The ways of Yahweh is his word of truth, and upon it he established treaty or covenant with all mankind, beginning from the time of Adam. Yahshua is the word of Yahweh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Anyone that rejects him has no excuse in time of judgment. Proverb 8, 32 to 36. Based on the above knowledge that Yahshua created all things, including mankind, and worked with the fathers in the past, it's safe to conclude that he, Yahshua, is the coming king, the judge, and savior who will return to judge and reward everyone according to his, his or her works. So we are shown in the scriptures that Yahshua had been there before creation. Yahshua existed. Yahshua created. Yahshua was part and parcel of what has been happening in the earth in terms of 
looking after creation, in charge of creation. He has at every age worked with the people of Yahweh. This is one of the hidden mysteries in human history, which many have not discovered. Yahshua is the mediator of the covenant, and everyone would be judged based on obedience to the covenant from Adam to the last generation on earth. People will be judged based on their good or righteous deeds or their evil, that is, wicked deed. Judgment of every generation will be based on conscience and the law available to them at their own time. This seems to be answering the second question. Yahshua that came and atoned for the sins of man, how would that atonement affect positively to those who lived in the time past? So we are going to get there, but let's continue. Yahshua as seed of man was appointed as the judge of men because of his accomplished task on the tree. Therefore, he was reckoned by the father as the only judge of fellow human beings. There was no sin found in him among the seeds of men. By virtue of his suffering, death, and shedding of his blood, he was appointed by the Father to judge the dead and the living, and to grant salvation to those who lived righteously, while the wicked will be destroyed. Revelation 11 verse 18. The following text further reveal Yahshua as the coming judge of the living and the dead. Now let's listen. Acts chapter 10, verse 2, 42 says, And he commanded us to preach to the, to the people and to testify that he, Yahshua, is the one appointed by Yahweh to be judge of the living and the dead. Did you hear that? So Yahshua is to judge all living and all dead, whether of ancient or of the new covenant. Let's go on. John chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father judges no one. You see, Father is not the judge, but he has given this power to judge to the Son. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, Yahshua. John chapter 5, verse 22. Moving forward. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I charge you in the presence of Yahweh and of Messiah Yahshua, who is to judge of the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. 1 Peter 5, verse 4, verse 5. 1 Peter 4, 5. But they will give account to him, that is to Yahshua, who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Now, when we talk about the dead, it also talk about those who died in the time past, all the time, all the way from Adam. So he is going to, whoever is the judge, whether he is a righteous person or unrighteous person, he will judge. And those that will be living when the judgment will ensue, he will judge all. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. When the Son of Man, Yahshua, comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he, and then he will sit on his glory, on, on his glorious throne before him, will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another. As he, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goat, and he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say, that is, Yahshua is the king, he will say to those on the right hand, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Now let's look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. 
And just as it is appointed to man to die once, and after that comes judgment. So human beings, they live, and sometimes they will die. At certain moments in their life, they pass on. Now, when they die, they will wait. They wait for what? For judgment. Everybody must pass through his judgment. The judgment of Yahshua Messiah. The dead and the living. They must go through it. So Yahshua is that is the is is the Yahweh's son that is also man that will judge all creature, all human, living and the dead. Second Corinthians 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seats of Messiah, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. In, a, in another word, or in another sense, everybody must be judged according to his works. What did you do while you are on earth, breathing, living? When you are given opportunity to redeem yourself, when you are given opportunity to showcase that you need salvation, that you will be you know, saved from sin, the power of sin will be delivered and you'll be made to live, to become a living being throughout eternity. So what we do is important. This is what Christianity don't want to hear. What we do, the works. There, they remove that works and put grace. Mm -hmm. And what is the work? The good work of the Father you must do. Mm -hmm. That is what the Bible is teaching. The good works of the Father. What is the good works of the Father? The Father has given to us his good works in Torah, in the Ten Commandments. So all that Yahweh commands is what we must do. That is the doing. That is the work. So what is Yahweh telling you to do. For instance, today is Sabbath. What did he say? Rest. When he issue instruction or he give you, he says something to obey it. Don't refine it. Don't modify it. Don't decorate it. Don't make it, don't do it to please yourself at the expense of the word or the commandments of Yahweh. Otherwise, you will not be doing. This is what is happening in Christianity. Christians try to modify, try to, in, at times they change, they remove the word of Yahweh and they will do their own thing. So they said, he came, just believe, have faith in him, then by his grace, you will be saved. That is true, but you wouldn't leave doing. You wouldn't leave obedience. You wouldn't leave, you know, what he commands you to do. Christians, they don't keep the Sabbath. He asks them to keep. He's doing. Do it. Live and honor him. Obey him. That is what he's asking you to do. The work is not go and carry wood on the head and run up and down. It's not going to, it's not a work of going to fetch money, time money. Look for wealth, look for fame. No, that is not the work he's talking about. The work he's talking about is his word, doing his work, what he pronounced, his voice, his commands, the covenant, all that he said, he put together, he called covenant. He bring it into treaty, put it as a contract and ask us to keep them. That is agreement. Keep the agreement. He keep his own side of agreement. You must keep your own side of agreement. That is the work. And Christianity said, no, it cannot be like that. We do whatever pleases us. They don't keep his feast. Passover, they don't keep. Feast of Tabernacle, they don't keep. Now, we finished Feast of Tabernacle around the October. Now they are staging their, what is called Christmas. This is pagan feast. They replaced Yahweh's uh, uh, feast 
with their own feast, Christmas. And after this Christmas, by New Year, then after, they will celebrate Easter. And all the whatever festivities of the Gentiles. These are pagan feasts. This particular time is when the world, through the gift of Satan, that taught them, that told them that sun is worth worshipping. That by 25th, because the world, the Gentile world believed that around 25th, this, the, 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 because we have longer night now, then at about 25th, this, the, the, there will be a kind of equilibrium. Now, the, the day will be harassing itself, whereby there, there is a kind of balancing. So at that time, they celebrated the sun. The different nations had used different ideas or brought in different ideas. Most of them associated with their idols, with their gods, and so on, which they, 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 they worship. They said Jupiter or whatever, Saturn or whatever they call it, is born at a particular time in December, which is which they, they associated with 25th. And when Christianity captured the, 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 the Hebrew way, which is this covenant where we follow, when they took the Torah, when they took the, 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 the gospel, they modified everything and instituted human commandments, traditions of elders, which Yahshua warned we must not follow. And this tradition of elder, part of it is introduction of this the Christmas. It's not written in the Bible. It's just tradition. It's just commandment. That which is practiced from the paganism. They just brought it in the pagan world. They brought it into their, their own way of practice. And they said, that is the way to follow. The Messiah actually was not born at that time. At that season. Or oh, during uh, December 25th. It wasn't where he was born. If we want to look at where he was born, that could be around the, the period we celebrate the Feast of um, Tabernacle. But then, Yahshua didn't ask us to name the date he was born, nor celebrate it. He didn't tell us to celebrate his birthday. He told us to celebrate only his death. That is what he commands us to celebrate in the Bible. That is what is written. And that is what we celebrate on the Passover day. Feast of Passover. They canceled it and planted Easter. And Easter is associated with pagan feasts or festival. So I'm just trying to stress all this to showcase that Christianity do what pleases them. They follow paganism. They add, they just oppose. It's, Christianity is a syncretic religion. Religion that added whatever they got from here and there and packaged it together and had it as their way of life. And once somebody is disobeying your way, they cannot hope for the kingdom because no rebellious person will enter there. Yeshua said, you call me a master, master. You do not do what I say. Then how will you enter when you cannot do? When you cannot do the will of Yahweh? Because they came to him in Matthew chapter 7, 21 and 22, 23. Said, Master, Master, open door for us. Oh, let us enter. We want to go in because we we worked miracles in your name. We did all that wonders. We did all that miracle. All in your name. Please let us. Say, you who walk iniquity, you who are lawless, you are lawless, you are Torahless, you are the, 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 a covenant breaker, you are a sinner. I don't know you. So, sin is one who refused to do who refuse to obey the word of Yahweh. Covenant breaker, transgressor, lawless person. 
Acts chapter 17, 31. Because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed by a man. He called him by a man. He said, that man is Yahshua Messiah. He appointed him. And of his, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. He rose Yahshua the son from the dead. Most people believe Yahweh has been seen. Most people believe that they have seen Yahweh. But how? But Yahshua the prophets and the disciples bear witness that no one has seen Yahweh and live. Now we, we, we read in um, or we discussed earlier in the service the name of Yahweh, how that name came about or how Yahweh wanted to magnify his name before Moses. Moses wanted to see Yahweh. Yahweh told him, no one has seen me and lived. No one. Therefore, you can't see me. You can't see my face. But I will show you my back. Did he see the back of Yahweh? If you ask me, no. Bible didn't say he saw his back. Otherwise, he would have mentioned how his back looked. Rather, what Moses saw was, or what he heard was, Yahweh, Yahweh, almighty, merciful, gracious, uh, 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 Abundant in, in goodness, long suffering, truth. That was what he was hearing. Word, 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 word was what he was hearing. So, actually, he didn't see Yahweh the Father. But we are told along the line, somebody said, I saw him face to face. Who? Let's continue. He was also seen by the disciples. Yahshua was who people saw in the time of old. Yahshua is who they saw in the time of old. Following what we, we, we discussed about the preeminence and preexistence of Yahshua, you can pick it up that who human beings have been seen have been Yahshua. If he was part and parcel of creation, according to Colossians chapter 1 and other texts we read, it is clear that Yahshua had existed in the time past and he worked with one like Adam, Noah, Abraham, because he said, even before Abraham was, he was there. So, when the Gentiles, um, sorry, when the Jews heard that Yahshua had existed even before Adam, uh, Abraham, they tried to stone him. What are you talking about? I will tell you that those Jewish people didn't know Yahshua. They didn't know. They didn't read the book of Isaiah. They didn't read the book of um, Proverbs. They didn't read the book of uh, David. Because David said, before the mountains, before the hills, before all those create things that we are created, we are there. He was in existence. They didn't understand. There are so many things in the scriptures that, uh, that was recorded about Yahshua that the Jewish people didn't pick up. And that's why they were blinded so much because they received error. Most of them we are taught error. And some of them who knew somehow made up their mind because of their positions, because of who they were. They thought Yahshua was coming to take away their kingship, their, 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 their priesthood, their office, their powers mm -hmm. as Sahendrans. But they, they didn't realize he was coming to fulfill a particular assignment. Mm -hmm. So that he can verily, you know, fortify himself, position himself as the judge, the judge of the universe, the 
the judge of the, the earth. He was also seen by the disciples and apostles and the people in the days of his first coming. In the later days, after Yahshua would have accomplished the task of delivering mankind and the earth from power of sins, the Father Yahweh will be revealed to them in the new kingdom. So the Father will not be seen until Yahshua will accomplish the work that he was sent to do on earth. He has done the first part. The second part is to do what? To judge and to reward everyone according to his doings, according to his works. So that second part is what the believers are awaiting. The believers are waiting that he will come the second time. He will appear to, to come and reclaim the earth from Satan, who is now ruling and controlling the world as the God of this world. The Father, Yahshua, and the saints will reign in the new heaven and in the new earth after Yahshua would have come and reclaimed the earth and enthroned righteousness on the earth. No sinners will be there. It's obvious Yahshua was seen by men of old, not Yahweh. They didn't see Yahweh. And unknown to them, Yahshua was always revealed in the identity of the Father as Yahweh. He was always going with that family name, Yahweh. And at some other times, he was called an angel, prophet, man, servant, Messiah, etc., etc. Therefore, let's return to the covenant commandments which he preached and died for. So that as a faithful servant, you will return to obedience of the word of the Father. Repentance and faith in Yahshua will set one free in the time of judgment. Repent today and follow your creator. His judgment is coming. Only the repented souls will be saved. Amen. That is number one. Number two question, quickly, we want to answer it quickly. Yahshua came in the new covenant times. How will his sacrificial atonement affect those who died before he came? Now, listen carefully. I will be repeating most of the things that will be said, but pay attention so that you grab it. Now, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 is the standpoint. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 was a promise for a savior to deliver mankind from the sin of death. That is second death. Yahweh made that promise to Adam and Eve and all mankind. If in the end, one will come, the seed will come to rescue you from sin, second death, which will be one to go from this earth and perish forever and become dust. So, whereas somebody can die and await judgment, now, Yahweh don't want somebody to, you know, to be part of the second death. That's what he was avoiding in humanity. So, throughout, he tried to avoid human beings from testing death, first death or second death. But somehow, there was no way one would es uh, es uh, escape first death because one has broken the covenant. It is second death. It was by his grace. Covenant means agreement. When we talk about covenant, Bible is book of covenant. Covenant means you will do the certain part of the, the what is written, what is stated in the book. While I do my part, you do your part. Now, anybody that refuse or break that agreement, there will be consequence. There will be, you know, penalty. And we are told that Bible is written based, the penalty is based on a cost, and that cost is death, cost of death. 
and that cause of death is second death. That is what many people don't understand. The covenant, everybody is carrying the covenant. You have to obey or do your own bit of the covenant. Why Yahweh does, we do his own. At the end of the, of the day, anybody that fails, there will be consequences. Bear this in mind as we move on. Now, Isaiah 53, 1 to 12, told us about Yahshua, the suffering servant, the servant of Yahweh, the messenger of Yahweh, the one Yahweh said we come into this earth to die for sins of human beings. Even Isaiah the prophet, even Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 from 20 to 26 or thereabout, about, or 27, predicted his death. And he said at the end of his time, end of his work, he will be cut off. He will be killed. In fact, he will be killed in his mid, mid, mid age or blossoming of his age. He will be taken away amongst men. Daniel predicted that. And that's why Jewish people hate the book of Daniel, particularly chapter 9. They hate it. Because what? They don't want to hear about Yahshua has come, Yahshua has come. Daniel chapter 9 predicted the coming of Yahshua, the first coming of Yahshua. So it paralyzes them. How is it that that was written? They didn't see, they didn't capture it. When he came, they refused him. And many people today who are in Christendom, they also refused. They said, how do they refuse? They call another. It's not him. It's not him that holds the covenant. He holds the key of covenant, old and new. Yes, we are told that Moses gave them the law. Yahshua was the one that handed it to Moses because Moses wouldn't have been hearing the voice of Yahweh. It was the voice of Yahshua that Moses was hearing. Even seen, we are told that the 70 elders saw him and they ate before him. It was Yahshua. It's not Yahweh. It was said that no one will see the father eyes to eye because he doesn't behold iniquity. Mm -hmm. Human beings are prone with sin. Yahweh will not behold. When Adam and Eve fell, that was when they when they sinned, that was it. And when we drew from them, he hid his face. And up to now he's hiding his face. Who's been walking? Who's been acting? We are told that Yahweh appointed him to be the judge at the end. Mm -hmm. Matthew 26, 26 to 28, we are told that Yahshua fulfilled the promise that was made to deliver man from his sin. So Isaiah 53 to 1 to 12, Daniel chapter 9, and Matthew 26, 26 to 28 are all clear. And the other prophets hinted on this. This question requires an answer on forgiveness of sin, judgment, and salvation. That is a question that says, how will his sacrificial atonement affect those who died before he came? So it requires forgiveness of sin, judgment, and salvation. Now, Yahshua will come to do what was appointed of him for him to be the judge. Did he do it? He came. He did all the work that the father gave, it, gave to him to do. And he achieved the objective by going to the stake, pouring his blood. And by the reason of his suffering, his death, the outpouring of the blood, that he was giving key. He was giving power. He was giving authority to stand above all men to judge them. Whether old or new is based on the perfection, his righteousness, the achievement of conquering death, sin, Satan. That was on that basis he became the judge. 
of all. But somebody will say, but Yahshua benefited those in the New Testament era. Those that died earlier, his death wouldn't affect them. I mean, positively. They, they, they were not taught, they were not educated. Now, what it means? Let's listen as we go on. Because one thing is obvious. Right from creation, you established a man conscious and law. I mentioned it earlier. Conscience and law. And everybody goes with that. Whether in the days of Adam or Noah or Abraham or Israelites or even when Yeshua came, conscience and law had been in the vogue and has been in play up to today. So anybody that does not make use of his conscience and does not keep the law, obey the covenant commanded, will be in trouble. Because everything, though each generation, each age is given law according to how they lived, according to their nature, their behavior, their character, yeah, when we look at what is in vogue at a particular age, and he will give his law, he will give his commandments. So if you ask me, the commandment or the law, the word was refined as human beings progress. It was more refined in the days of Noah than in the days of Adam. But Yahweh know or understands that they will be judged. Adam and Eve and his generation will be judged according to the kind of law he gave to them. The same thing in the time of Noah. The same thing in the time of Abraham. The same thing goes on Israelites till when Yahweh scattered them up to this point, up to this time. So that is how Yahweh will judge. Yahweh is not going to judge an individual based on the time Yahshua came. If he do that, that will be partiality. Because those who died without Yahshua, that means they will perish because Yahshua didn't affect them. But Yahshua died for all, Old Testament and New Testament people, his coming, the reason of his coming is for Yahweh to prepare him as a judge who will judge the good and the bad, the, the, the righteous and the unrighteous. Because everybody has been given the way, the law, the commandments to follow and the conscience to live his or her life, everybody. One will say, well, the New Testament people benefited more because they were, they were given the Yahshua who taught them, who renewed the covenant. What of the covenant of old? It was renewed from time to time. If you look at the covenant of old, it was renewed from time to time. Whether in the time of uh, Noah, it was renew renewed. After the flood, Yahweh renewed the covenant with Noah and his descendant. In the days of Abraham, John chapter, I um, mean Genesis chapter 17, Yahweh also renewed that covenant at that time, even with circumcision. He said, Come before me and be blameless, follow me, walk before me, remove sin, remove your hand from sin. What is the key in the judgment is is somebody carrying sin, is somebody dwelling in sin, is somebody living in sin. Anybody without sin must enter the kingdom. Anybody without sin. So that is what this message is all about. When Yeshua started his ministry, the first message was, repent, for the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand. On and on and on and on the message. So the, the message of repentance has been there. Now let's move on. So that I finish quickly. First, whether Yahshua was designated to come in the days of Adam, Noah, Abraham, or at the new covenant era, 
His suffering, death, and resurrection were designed to capture all the ages. Forgiveness of sin, judgment, and salvation demands one thing. One thing. And that is obedience to the word of Yahweh. So when we obey the word of Yahweh, we never tolerate sin. We will never carry sin. We will never do sin. We will not have anything to do with sin. Obedience to the word of Yahweh. And this is broken down into three. Obedience to the word of Yahweh. According to the word of Yahweh. He said, this obedience to the word of Yahweh is just opposed in three phases. One, hear his voice. Hear his voice. Two, keep the covenant. Three, obey what the covenant says. That is, obey his commandments. Obey his law, his status, his judgment. Obey them. So if we do this, we will be ready for his mercy, for his grace to do what? To usher us in into salvation. That is what is required. Was this not said to the time in the days of Adam? Was it not said in the days of Noah? Was this not said in the days of Abraham? Was this, was this not said in the days of his descendants up to this age? The same message is still going on. Hear his voice, keep his covenant, obey his commandments. Now, let's listen to him. Forgiveness of sin is obtained by observing the three ways of obedience. Number two, which is judgment, will be delivered based on keeping the three ways of obedience. And three, salvation. Salvation is by the Messiah or Yeshua's grace plus one's obedience one's works, that is the works of the Father, the good works of the Father. Notice at creation, Yahweh gave every mankind conscience and law to obey. What says the scriptures? What is the interpretation of all this by the scriptures? Let us listen to the word of Yahweh to affirm what is being said here. Forgiveness, for instance, forgiveness of sin, who is Yahweh like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on, on us. You will tread our sins and underfoot. You will, sorry, you will tread our sins underfoot and haul all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Malachi, uh, Micah chapter 7, 18 to 19. Micah 7, 18 to 19. Deuteronomy 430. Talking about forgiveness of sin. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, why? Because they are sinning and sinning and sinning. So when, they, when trouble, when persecution, when affliction shall come upon them, and all of them will happen to them, then in later days, you will return. Return is you will repent and come back. You will return to Yahweh, your father, and listen to his voice. Did you hear that? The voice of Yahweh is featuring here again. You must hear his voice. That is compulsory. If you must be saved, you must hear his voice. You must keep his covenant. Hearing his voice is, I mean, covenant is act of the voice, what he spoke or what he uh, told Moses to write. That is where um, the covenant comes about, the agreement. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 22. Return, repent, come back, O faithless children, and I will heal your faithlessness. Here we are, we come to you. For you are Yahweh our Father. Deuteronomy 30, 1 to 3. Now, this is the catch. When all these blessings and causes I have set before you come on you 
and you take them to heart. Wherever Yahweh your father disperses or scatters you or drives you, you among into the gentle nations, wherever he will push you. And when you and your children return, that is repent to Yahweh your father and obey, obey him. Did you hear that again? With all your heart and with all your soul, according to everything I command you today, then Yahweh your father will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where he scattered you. Where he scattered you. Listen to learn. Forgiveness of sin demands repentance. Return to Yahweh. It requires you to return to Yahweh. That is repent and come back. What about judgment and salvation? Let's take it together. By Yahshua's righteousness and accomplishment of the work of the stake, Abba Yahweh appoints him to judge the living and the dead. That's both Old Testament or new co Old Covenant and the New Covenant mankind. Yahweh's plan on the dead. That is, our pouring of the blood of Yahshua Messiah was meant to prepare and position him, Yahshua, for the judgment and salvation or condemnation of mankind, which comes at the end of human age. He, Yahshua, is the predicted seed of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Isaiah prophesied of Yahshua's birth. Therefore, Yahweh himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, Yahshua, and shall call his name Emmanuel, Isaiah 7, verse 14. Yahweh elected him, Yahshua, to atone for the sins of mankind. Now, let's look at scripture to affirm this again. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 says, I charge you, therefore, before Yahweh and the master Yahshua Messiah, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom and his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So he is the judge of both, both the living and the dead. First Peter 5, 5. They will give an account to him, Yahshua, who is ready to judge the living and the dead. First Peter 5, verse 5. Acts 10, verse 40, 42. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he, Yahshua, who was ordained by Yahweh to be judge of the living and the dead. Acts 10, 42. Sorry, that is Acts 10, 42. Psalm 110, 5 to 6. Psalm 110, 5 to 6. Yahweh, here, you see, why I told you earlier that in the past, in the time past, Yahweh was the family name used. Yahshua was bearing that name. And to the people of old, Yahshua appeared as if he is the father. No, he's not the father. He was working on the family name, Yahweh. So Psalm 1105-6 read, Yahweh, which is Yahshua, is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places, places with dead bodies. He shall execute the heads of many countries. So he is going to be judged and he's going to clear nations. They are kings, they are rulers who never obeyed the father, who never obeyed the Yahweh. He's going to deal with them because he's coming in to take the land the earth which Satan took away from Adam and Eve is coming to reclaim it. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. We read it before. It also says that Yahshua is coming to judge the sheep, the goat, and all, including all nations that we gather before him. He's coming to judge all. Now, salvation. Who is given to give salvation? Isaiah 43, verse 10. For he, Yahshua, will save his people from their sins. So he is the one that is going to give salvation at the end of the day. Matthew 1, 21. 
we, we are told that a son was born in the house of Mary and, and uh, Joseph, and the name that they called him was Yahshua, which means Savior. Yahweh is salvation, salvation of his people. It is the salvation of Israel and the entire world by extension. Luke 2, 29 to 31 says, Sovereign Yahweh, now let your servant, Simeon is talking here, let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation. Who is he speaking about or talking, talking, talk, telling us? He's telling us about Yahshua. Yahshua is the salvation of mankind as written in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. He's going to save his people from their sins. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. This is Simeon. He was the high priest at that time. He was waiting. He was to die before the time of Yahshua, but Yahweh kept him until Yahshua will be born, and he will, you know, not only circumcise him, but name him. So he was named by Simeon. Romans chapter 2, verse 6. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. Did you hear that? So this judgment will be as one would have achieved or done what he was commanded to do. That is how the judgment is going to play out. Now, in conclusion, Yahshua has existed from the beginning. He is not just Messiah of the new covenant, but of old as well. His pre-existence and preeminence testifies to it. Yahshua did not come to judge anyone or give salvation at the time he arrived in the earth the first time. But to remind us to repent and to return to Yahweh, to come back to Yahweh, the Father, before the judgment day. Yahshua is the king. Yahshua is the judge. Yahshua is the savior of all those who repent and return to the Father, Yahweh. And he will judge the living and the dead. Those who kept the commandments of Yahweh will live. Those who didn't will be condemned and they will perish. And that will be the end of their lives. Therefore, Yahshua is given to reclaim the earth he will join the earth. At the end of the day, the entire earth will be engulfed with fire because sin will be wiped out. Satan and all those that have committed iniquity and are professing iniquity and are following sin will be wiped out. So there will be new heaven, there will be new earth. Why the new Jerusalem will be the headquarters where the father and the son will reside. And all the saints that are elected to rule the, the earth that will be governed in the new creation. It will be as if the earth is recreated because sin will go. This old order will go. Then there will be new order. Okay. May you be there. May you be found righteous. May you be found doing. Because Romans 2, 6 says, he will judge everyone according to what they have done. Begin to do, begin to obey, begin to, you know, walk in the way of truth, the way of his way, the way of his righteousness, so that you possess life, so that we inherit eternal life, which is given to us free of charge. May that be a portion, may that be my portion. May Yahweh bless us. May we not be distracted, may we not be disappointed, may we not walk away from what we ought to be doing. And when the trumpet will sound, may we, may, may we be part of the team, part of the people appointed to enter the crown. May we not miss our crown in Yahshua's name.